I'm do you want to let's introduce everybody first Kirk, Kirby okay hey guys sure. welcome to the next episode of Crook and Murder uh today we are going to be discussing uh, the secrets of Glamis Castle I uh, will be your host uh Kenny Crook Irish Kirby uh you may know me as that guy who once bought a and w at the local grocery store it's good stuff, man. And I am joined today uh, by my co-host, Maxwell Murder, the Bear Jew. Yes, hello, everybody. It's the third night of Hanukkah, and uh, I'm known as Maxwell Murder most of the time, or Murder, but today uh, we're going by my other moniker, the Bear Jew, um, and I'm going to light the candles after we introduce Alex. <laughs> and And we are also joined today... Uh, by Special G Alex. Hi, Special Guest Alex. Always here, but always temporary. <laughs> Hiding under the covers. I'm just surrounded <laughs> by Legos. So, uh, Maxwell Murder, do you want to do our special opening? Yeah, okay. So, it's Hanukkah. Um, you know, a lot of people don't realize this, but Hanukkah is uh, kind of a third-tier holiday for us. But... I still like to celebrate it. It's got a cool story with violence and killing and stuff and a badass guy named Judah Maccabee. So I'm going to light the candles. So I'm going to say the prayer too. Baruch atah Adonai Erehem Achem Asher Kinder B'Mitzvah Tetziva L'Chach Ner Shel Hanukkah. I'm not going to do all the prayers, by the way, because there's a prayer for each candle, but I'm not going to do that. So light the this is the candle you light with and you go the candles go from right to left but you light left to right happy hanukkah guys thank you murder oh shit oh shit, oh, shit. one of hanukkah was not lit hold on there we go amen Hey, happy Hanukkah, everybody. Happy Hanukkah, everybody. Uh, Let's hope Krampus shows up. <laughs> hey, murder. So do you yeah. always uh, do you always light with the middle candle? Yeah. Uh, okay. I'm, forgetting, I'm forgetting the name of it, but so there's eight nights of Hanukkah, but there's nine candles. And the middle candle, it's either a middle candle or on the side, that's what you light with. And then you light the, you light that first, and then you light the candles from left to right, but the candles go from right to left because that's how Hebrew is. You go right to left. Well, that's pretty sick, bro. Mm -hmm. I like uh, Hanukkah because it is a celebration of lights and it's eight days of fun and my kids aren't here, but I would be giving them presents every day. That's a present every day, guys. Not just a bunch of shitty presents on Christmas. So celebrate Hanukkah instead or one of the pagan holidays. Absolutely. You get a lot more presents with those the alternatives. Plus you get to paint the walls with blood with the pagan holidays. So Yes. You know, yeah. we, we actually we have some ceremonies in our religion, in the Jewish religion, where we, we do slaughter a, a goat in the street. Hell yeah. That's free yeah. meat on Christmas Day. Yeah, but well it's actually uh uh um uh, it's the I can't remember. It's the Halloween holiday in, in, in like early early year. But it's it's fun. So it's and like can, even better Halloween. Actually, yeah. It's um you, people dress up as crazy ass shit and you kill a fucking goat in the street and they'll let the blood out. Like it's badass. And then you play some Metallica while doing it. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Or some modest Yahoo if you want. I don't know. So are you ready to kick off the secrets of Glamis Castle murder? Yeah, I just I just want to say one thing before we do that. I watched Preacher again recently. I finished it. And uh, the show on AMC, I've read the comic book probably a dozen times in my lifetime. Garth Ennis is my favorite writer. The show is better than the comic book. I'm standing by that statement. Oh, it's not. Yeah. Oh, dead. I don't care what anyone says. The casting of Tulip as with Ruth Nega, who you might recognize from a lot of things. She was in some Marvel stuff. And then Dominic Cooper, who was also in some other Marvel stuff. And then the weird Northern Irish guy they got to play Cassidy. 
perfect casting. Change our mind. Cookirish.studios at gmail.com. Yeah. Tell me Jesse Custer is better in the comic book, and I'll I'll have a very good answer that Jesse Custer is better in the show. You should probably start checking that email at some point. Um <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Absolutely. Let's, uh, well, let's get this started, uh, Maxwell. I bet you know what? I bet Cassidy, the vampire from Preacher, lived in this castle. All right. So we're we're this today we're on a a very mysterious castle in Scotland. Um uh God, where is it? It's called Glamis Castle. It's close to um What's the biggest town it's close to? It's close to the town of Angus, uh, located Angus, near yeah. Forfar, uh, and it's set in the fertile and broad lowlands of Strathmore. Uh, yeah. It is it's... the Scottish castle of Scottish castles. Um, if you ever think, hey, I wonder if a Scottish fucking castle is haunted, uh, you're probably right. And this one kind of sets the standard for it. It's true. Uh, so... Glamis Castle, it, there's a lot of mysterious shit about it. So, and it, going from kind of like spooky-ish to fucking terrifying. So we're going to discuss the following. These are our sort of like subjects. The ghost of Earl Beardy. Beardy? I assume he had a fucking wicked beard. He better um, fucking have. Yeah. A ghostly woman without a tongue. This one is the terrifying part. Uh, the Grey Lady of Glamis, also terrifying, and the secrets of Glamis Castle. So there's some architectural questions about the castle. So, uh, un unquestionably so. Honestly, before I started yep. researching this, uh, I went into this podcast going, we're just going to talk about a castle uh, with more windows on the outside than they have on the inside. And like, there's something mysterious going on there. What I didn't think I'd find was a deluge of fucking crazy shit. Like, it was, it's it's so much more than just that. Like, it's got everything. It runs the gambit from fucking deaths to witch hunts to, like, ghosts to fucking stuff that is straight out of Game of Thrones. And we're going to delve into royalty all Royalty was born there. Royalty was there, yeah. Uh, yeah. Queen Elizabeth. Yep, we'll get into that in a little bit, but so let's just talk about the background of this huge castle. I'm just gonna say I don't know. I, I hope my girlfriend's watching this. She likes to tune in. We we want to get married in a Scottish castle or around a Scottish castle, and I think Glamis Castle might be the one. I'll definitely um, attend for that. Oh no, you're coming. I'm paying for Alex <laughs> and you and Jordan. You're all coming. I was just gonna say, give me five hundred bucks and I'll I'll build you a Scottish castle. Okay, <laughs> what in well, we fucking Minecraft? <laughs> like how Minecraft, are you gonna build a that... No, it'll be like, I don't know, some the toilet paper rolls, some maybe <laughs> just you know, like wrapping paper, but I'll build you a Scottish castle. It's five hundred gonna... bucks. It's just got a sign with Scotland misspelled on it. <laughs> Yeah, it's like S K O T. <laughs> with, with like a bottle of like. Not even, it's not even Scotland, right? It's Scott Lawn. Like yeah. it's just. <laughs> <laughs> like a, a big bottle of Johnny Walker Red because it's the cheapest. <laughs> oh my God, dude. Like, never hiring Alex again. <laughs> he kind of sounds like the best architect I've ever known, by the way. <laughs> all right so this castle built in 1372 is nestled in the hills of scotland i think it's really kind of in the middle of nowhere because scotland has some areas like that um, yeah, dude so i mean scotland was a basis for hogwarts so when you see like fucking uh harry potter flying around you're actually seeing this like the hills of scotland in that so imagine even, that shit even in the books jk rowling says it's it, it's hidden in the hills of scotland so um all right set in the fertile and broad lowlands of uh, strathmore located near forfar forfar county of angus i love these names i wish i could do a scottish accent but i can't i really want uh, to say like anus like angus <laughs> angus 
lies between the uh, Sidlo Hills and the south of Grampane Mountains. Grampane Scent Mountains sound like a scary place. Yeah, I know. It, it kind of sounds like it's going to give you hemorrhoids. Um, the estate covers more than 57 square kil- kilometers, so that's 14,000 acres. Yeah, it's that's pretty big. Royalty in England, the only thing they have left is land and press. <laughs> <laughs> All and not got. very good ones at that. No, no. Um, I mean, the, the best ones left and came to California. Those fucking corgis. I, I love, love corgis. corgis. Yeah. I what, I wonder what happened to those corgis when the queen died. Uh, you think well, you think it was like like you know pharaohs? You think like the corgis like they were alive and were just like shoved in the casket with the queen, just like barking and yapping. Uh, <laughs> I digress. That is not. We are not here to talk about the queen. Oh my god, the funeral of Queen Elizabeth, and she's just lying there, and you hear, yep, 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 coming from her casket. Jesus Christ. (laughs) In Westminster Abbey, where they do all that shit, that big fucking building that has echoes, just. Well, we just pissed off all of England, so. (laughs) Well, I just watched that Harry and Meghan show, you know, that. The, on Netflix, it's yeah. actually pretty good. Um, but uh, royalty in England, it just they're kind of assholes. Um, and Harry, the best looking one, who actually you know fought in a war, who's kind of a badass, was like, "I'm getting the fuck out of here, you pieces of shit." Love it. I imagine okay. royalty in England being kind of like the royalty in like fucking Andor, where it's yes. like everybody wants to backstab everybody, and you're under the watchful eye of the emperor. That's exactly what the show was like, actually. <laughs> um, so anyways, uh, let's see. Big estate. I'm just going to digress here. My aunt has a, a, a... She married a very wealthy British man. He died a few years ago. And she still has the apartment in London. And it's actually in a building that is owned by the Queen. And basically every they, Everyone who buys an apartment there, they have a 99-year lease. They don't actually own it. It's really weird. Um, They actually do that in China. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah. You basically lease your home from the state. Yeah. So a lot of land in England is like that. It's not all the land, but some of, like, a big portion. So, like, this 14,000 acres in Scotland, probably owned by royalty. People want to live there. They got to fucking, like, pay by the square foot. (laughs) Oh, I don't doubt it. I mean, it's yeah. it's still the like fucking feudal system, in a sense yeah. because in a sense, yeah, it, it's owned by lords. Like, yeah. and the lords are renting it from the king and queen of exactly. England. Yeah, actually, for my for my aunt's birthday, my cousin got her a square foot in Scotland of land that makes her like a very low duchess. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I've All always right, wanted to be a duchess. I need to. You know, Alex, uh, you can be a duchess of my heart. <laughs> you can be the, you can be the duchess of where do you live, Alex? Well, you don't have to say where you live, just area. Connecticut. Yeah, you're the duchess of Connecticut. I don't think anybody <laughs> wants to be the duchess of Connecticut, <laughs> <laughs> but that's your title now, whether you want to be or not, Alex. Okay. Only so, the only thing lower is the duchess of New Jersey. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank God you're not that, right? I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> the Duchess of Phil. Um, so this this land contains parks and gardens as well as lands to produce lumber and beef. Man, I bet that beef is good. Uh, two, <laughs> probably. Two stri- yeah, probably. Might have mad cow, but two streams run through the estate as well as uh, an arboretum that features trees from all over the world, many of them both rare and old. That is the most royal fucking Commonwealth shit I've ever heard. So not only are they just fucking taking over other people's lands, but they're like, it's not good enough if we leave it there. We got to bring it back. Exactly. Yeah, this is Gondor on fucking crack. It's like they (laughs) saw like the fucking white tree of Gondor and went, you know what? Let's have all the goddamn trees. Let's uplift it and we'll put it in this arboretum. (laughs) 
That's hilarious. Um, okay, it's home to the Earl of Strathmore and King Horn. Um, are they still alive? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, the family. Yeah. It's it's the it's the Strathmore slash I think like Lion family that owns it, and nice. uh, and they're they're earls, so it's passed um, down through the generations. Yeah. Okay. All right. Has been in the hands of the Lion family, like you said, since the 14th century. Through the present building dates uh, prominently from the 17th century. This is one of my favorite. This fact that we're coming up on is one of my favorite things because it's one of my favorite plays. Uh, Shakespeare's Macbeth, the titular character, resides in the castle. So no, Shakespeare he didn't. Took... He didn't in real life. I yeah. want to like fucking uh, draw that line right there. Macbeth actually never lived in the castle. What likely happened was uh, was uh, Shakespeare had actually heard of Glamis Castle and wrote that into his play. Yep. So yeah, and Macbeth, Macbeth is actually a an adaptation of a Norris play. And actually, if you watch The Northman, which came out, it's a new movie, that is what Macbeth is based on. Um, I love Shakespeare. He's the, the scribe. I, I'm a very literary guy, and I love Shakespeare. Um it was the child home home of Queen Elizabeth. I'm saying QE1, right? Not QE2? Uh, I believe, yeah. It's like the most recent Elizabeth. Okay, so that's QE2. That's interesting. So she just died. Queen Elizabeth II just died. And her second daughter, Princess Margaret. Oh, no, wait. Okay. Yeah, and she was roughly 1,000 years old. So Yeah, why fits. not? Yeah. <laughs> Princess Margaret was born there in, in 1930. So, yeah, actually, so the timeline, it's, it's Queen Elizabeth II. You know, um, I can do her voice. Uh, uh, what is it? Um, You're truly a complete Windsor. Oh my god! You cut I'm out a lot there. <laughs> I'm gonna try it again. It's a, it's a kids in the hall sketch. Uh, Yours truly, a completely loony Liz Windsor. That's actually much better. Thank you. Um, Scott um, Thompson does it pretty well. I I, I want to point out something before we go into the uh, the timeline of the castle, and Absolutely. that's uh, that if you notice here, it was prominently from the 17th century. Before the 1600s, the castle was a little more than a hunting lodge on that land. Um, reconstruction of the castle as it's known today didn't begin till after uh, the 1600s. It's interesting. So, like, it's a so it's a, the castle itself is like, you know, in terms of castle time, it's fairly recently built. Yeah, the the yeah. main parts of the castle are fairly recently built, and we'll go into part of that as we go through the history. All right, I love it. Okay, so let's start at the very beginning. This is 1034 in Scotland. In 1034, I'm just gonna say, mud people. Mud people. Mud they people. love their mud. You know, yeah. I was like, I think it was this one I was researching where, uh, oh no, it was one of the ones upcoming, but they they found a land uh, of like some people and they're just like, oh, you got some lovely mud here. And I immediately thought of the fucking Monty Python skit where it's like, there's a nice patch of mud over this way. You know, it's you like, the mud. They really <laughs> love their fucking mud for some reason. <laughs> Maybe I mean I get it. It's because of crops and trees and shit. Yeah. But man, do they love that? Yeah, they're not bog people like the Irish. They're mud people. Oh no, the Irish are definitely potatoes and bog people. I should yeah. know. I'm a fucking Irishman. <laughs> All right. So there was a murder at this castle or hunting lodge in 1034. Uh, 1034. Malcolm II was mortally wounded in a near uh, in a nearby battle and was taken to the lodge where he died. Uh, also, I'm going to say in 1034, a lot of battles with England and the Vikings. I bet England lost like most of those. <laughs> yeah, uh, unfortunately. And uh, the Black Plague plays a little role in that too. But um, uh, yeah, England, England under, uh, what's his name? Uh, Alfred the Unready, who was king at this time, which that's a great yeah, title. It's in the name. <laughs> Yeah, it's in the name. Kind of fucked shit up. But his, you know, his father was uh, uh, Edward the Great. <laughs> so he had a lot to live up to. Out of curiosity, Kirby, uh, 
crook. It says murder at the castle. Do you know what the murder was? Yeah, the Malcolm the Second was actually wounded in a nearby battle. Okay, so and it wasn't so, necessarily like, murder, really. Oh, okay, it so it wasn't like necessarily like yeah. murder, murder. It wasn't murder on the grounds, but not like knives out murder. When they dragged him to the hunting lodge and they died, or he died there, they essentially named it murder at the castle. Okay, okay. gotcha. So yeah, I mean, I'm sure his ghost is there because that's where he died. Yeah. Um. Okay, so we're going to jump a, co a couple hundred years. 1372, the castle was built and gifted to Sir John Lyon by Robert II. Uh, Robert II was king of Scotland, right? Uh, that I don't know. I'd have to I, believe so. I believe so, because it, it, it was either Robert the Bruce or his son, I think. Um, and if you, Robert the Bruce um, was way more of a badass than Braveheart, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because he actually got Scottish freedom. Like, he actually did it. Braveheart just got drawn and quartered. We should do an episode on William Wallace. We should do an episode on, 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 on uh, the Bruce. Robert the Bruce. Um, all right. Sir, Lyon, Sir John Lyon was the Thane. I love this. The Thane. That is a Norris term. The Thane of Glamis and husband to the king's daughter. It has remained in the lion family ever since. I'm sure there are a bunch of lion dudes there. <laughs> yeah, I've played Sky or Skyrim. I know what a yeah, thane is. Exactly. They're, they give me the house. <laughs> yeah. You <laughs> do like, jobs for him. This guy can murder fucking, uh, you know, dragons. Let's give him a house in Whitehall. Yeah, exactly. Man, I love that game. I'm going to replay that game. Uh, let's see, 1445 to 1537, so that's like almost 100 years, the title uh, Lord, Lord Glamis was created for Sir Patrick Lyon. So John Lyon, the sixth Lord of Glamis, married a Janet Douglas, daughter of the Master of Angus, which is close to the castle. She was later uh, burned at the stake in Edinburgh for being a witch. <laughs> Dude. Fuck it, her story is bonkers. Like, is she the one? Is she the one who was trying to murder uh, the king of Denmark? Oh yeah, yeah. I want. I want to. We're yeah. not going to go too much into it now, because later on in the episode, we're going to talk about her, and she, like her shit is just crazy. Um, I love witchy, witchy ladies. I don't know how she remarried because she's obviously like batshit insane, but we'll 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 talk about that. We'll get into it. All right, so uh, James V took control of the castle then after the witch burning and lived there for some time. Um, so then we're going to jump to 1543 to 1900. So that's, that's a long time. Glamis is returned to the lion, to John Lyon the Seventh. Patrick Lyon the Ninth, Lord of Glamis, is made an earl. I, I, I want to break in here real quick, guys. Yeah, let's do it. The reason why uh, there's this many time jumps is because if there wasn't, we'd be reading the fucking book of Genesis to you. <laughs> While reading about this, I was like, oh my god. If I have to talk about every goddamn family that went through this place, yeah. uh, everybody's going to fall the fuck asleep. Well, yeah, we skipped from... Open story. Yeah, we skipped yeah. from Lion the First to Lion the Sixth, so <laughs> there's a lot of lions in there. Um, all right, where did I, 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 I'm lost. Oh, there we are. Okay, sorry. Um, so renovations began on the castle during this time. Uh, inscription on one of the towers reads, built by Patrick, Lord Glamis, and Dame Anne Murray. So was she a dame, really, or just some slut? Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure she was a dame, too. Okay. Uh, she, she was the wife of, um... Patrick, the Lord of Glamis. Okay. So he wanted to immortalize her in, like, the castle grounds itself. And the renovations, like I was saying, begin right around this time. Yeah. Like, the so castle like as, the castle as we know it today, the East Wing, the West Wing, all the additions uh, started here. So they basically got this land, they got this hunting lodge, and then became an earl, and just was like, well, you know what? I want a bigger fucking house and they just kept adding and adding and adding sounds yeah. like royalty 
Yes. <laughs> Royalty or Americans. <laughs> <laughs> it does so, yeah. It, it, except the, the indigenous people in Scotland were the Scots. Yeah. <laughs> Much of the castle was built, was either rebuilt, renovated, or created during this era between uh, the 16th century and the 20th century. I, I do kind of want to point out that the uh, traditionally the English architect Inigo Joins has been linked to the redesign of this castle, which oh. is absolute fucking bullshit because the English are basically taking credit for what happened, like how this castle was made. And scholars actually believe that the king's master mason, William Shaw, a more likely candidate to that, because it has a far more Scottish design to the castle than an English one. So the English did what the English do best, and they go in and they went, that's a nice looking castle. We built that. Let's take credit for it. I know, Jesus. You know, I don't know, man. The English just, they've been, they've been circling the drain since we fucking kicked their asses in, in, in 1776. Fuck your tea. I will throw your <laughs> fucking tea in the harbor, and I will do it again. And when you come to our land, we're just going to murder all of you and your Hessian mes- men- uh, mercenaries. As a um, side note, England's actually a really friendly place. Uh, it's, it is. I love England, actually. Is. <laughs> I went there, and uh, and while drinking in England, I can equate it to this. If you go to a pub in England and you get drunk... You're likely to meet everybody in the pub by the end of the night. If you go to a pub in America, you'll be lucky to meet the fucking person next to you. Absolutely. I I I, I spent because my my aunt has the you know she spent she has splits her time between L.A. and London, so I've been to London a couple of times, and I gotta say drinking there as an eighteen year old nineteen year old was fucking awesome, and uh, I I even saw a. Uh, a jam band show there and it was everyone was super friendly um i met a girl there too it was pretty cool um so you, you you would be the kind of expert for this but didn't a lot of punk actually originate from england so there's disputes right um my personal opinion is the sex pistols were not the first punk band we all know that but they take credit for it especially their it wasn't actually a sex the, the sex Pistols don't take, take, take credit for it but their manager did the first real punk band, in my opinion, was actually probably the MC5, um, and they're, they're kind of obscure. But you, if you will, if you hear the song "Kick Out the Jams," you'll know it. Um, they played fast and hard before anyone else. And then I'd say the first real, real, real punk band was the Ramones. And the Murder. Pla- yeah. Have you heard of a band called Death? Yeah. Uh, where would you put them in that timeline? Because they're like, I wouldn't say they're they're not like punk, they're right? Proto, they're proto punk. So I proto punk. I'd, I'd call the I put them in the same the same sort of category as the Stooges. Okay. So, so proto punk, and so then there's another band called the Damned from England, who really like uh, put together that sort of like gothic punk kind of thing, like horror punk, I guess. Um, they're still touring. They're fucking awesome. I think. Um, they're one of my favorite bands. The Clash, too, one of my favorite bands. I'd say The Clash brought punk rock to, like, what it is today. They mixed in reggae. They mixed in a lot of ska. Like, they covered Police and Thieves. And then they were also, the, they, the Sex Pistols and the Ramones didn't do a lot of political stuff um, until, like, the Ramones in their later years did some political stuff. But the the Clash brought, like, leftist politics into punk rock as a sort of like because there was a lot of neo-nazis like in england at that time uh and what i love about the clash is like they started as like full-on like anarchist squatters they were going into empty buildings and living there and playing shows and shit so i was just curious because when i learned about the story of death itself i found it fascinating because they basically they just they like you know you you have these three black brothers doing proto punk in yeah. the 60s or something like that like it's, something crazy it's the like, 70s, early 70s. like early 70s and yeah they played fast and hard they played like like the MC5 like they played i'd say I'd call it like it's a 
it's almost a little metal. Death is a little metal too, but it's pretty punk too. Because I I'd say punk doesn't the music of punk doesn't have to con like conform to anything. So like a few black kids playing guitar super fast, I just call that punk rock anyways, right? Yeah. Well, if you guys are enjoying this little snippet, uh, Max <laughs> runs a podcast called My Brain Is Hanging Upside Down. Where he is currently covering a lot of punk bands. Uh, tune into yeah. that. And that yeah, actually, uh, special guest Alex is not helpful. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we'll do a maybe we'll do an episode on death. Actually, a good idea. But uh, the the name of it is from a Ramon song that was like one of their only political songs. Um, and we are going to steer this train back towards Scotland. Yeah. Anyways, back towards Scotland. Um. All right. So. Uh, where are we? So 19, so 19, uh, 1900 to today, 20th century, Glamis was used during the First World War as a military hospital. That's bitching. On September the 16th, 1916, a serious fire almost burned down much of the castle castle's components. However, Lady Elizabeth Bowles Lyon, queen, she was a queen. That was, was Queen Elizabeth. This chick oh. sprung into action to save the fucking castle and a lot of its artifacts. She was actually instrumental in uh, gathering a party together to make sure Glam's castle didn't burn down. Wow. You know, she was really the last good royal. Um, yeah, I mean, she got her hands dirty. You know, she and, did. And I, I, I actually respected that. When I read this, I was like, oh, she didn't just sit on a fucking throne all day. She was out there firefighting. And, Absolutely. You know, she can maybe lead my country. Yeah, well, they don't lead. It's actually in the Constitution. They can't get into politics now. <laughs> they can take the tax money. Exactly. Yes, they will take the tax money. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, just a side note, my, my aunt did meet Queen Elizabeth II, like, just as a meet and greet. And Queen Elizabeth II isn't fond of Americans, but you know who she is fond of? Me. Tall? Well, yeah. Not actually the opposite of you. Tall black <laughs> men. Like, seriously. Like, she that is like give... the exact opposite of me. Yeah. <laughs> Slamer. Murder doesn't actually know what Queen Elizabeth wanted in a sex partner. Well, well, it wasn't a... <laughs> she had a husband. She had a husband. And I, technically he was uh, the consort because he wasn't... She friendly. loved those beefy black men. Yeah. But yeah, in the meet and greets, like you know, you get it's a line of people that come up and like. Wait, 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 hold on. Is there search history bigblackdicks.com? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but see, the thing is, she she's British and proper, so she had to dictate that to someone who was on the computer. Dick <laughs> for sure. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, instead of hey Siri, it's hey Archibald. <laughs> Uh, excuse, excuse me, Secretary. I would love to to see a Google search of big black cocks. <laughs> Great, shut up, Siri. <laughs> That's not quite big enough. <laughs> God, we are really, really going into some territory that is not good. Oh no, but, we're good. This is we're going to get canceled by episode five. But go on. I'm just, but it just in those meet and greets, you know, you do a she does a kiss on the cheek. That's the normal greeting. With the big black guys, like tall, you know, it's like Idris Elba, right? She loved him. Like they were besties. <laughs> I don't think he fucked her, but <laughs> <laughs> allegedly, I'd fuck her. You know what? Eighty-two years old, I'd bang her. I'd bang <laughs> Idris, Idris, Elba. Idris Elba. <laughs> I get. Yeah. Actually, you're right. I'd rather bang Idris Elba. <laughs> I look. I don't. I don't discount the queen if she banged Idris Elba. I don't. Yeah, good for her. Uh, okay, so let's get into the ghosts and the legends of this shit. This is like this is the this is the meat. This is the succulent liver of the show. I like liver. Um, many reported ghosts haunt the ca Glamis Castle. According to this, has marked the most haunted castle in Scotland, which I do not doubt. Yeah, it's um, the fucking, it's the premier haunted Scottish castle. Whenever yeah. you guys see, like, fucking rescued rangers going into a Scottish castle, it's probably fucking Glamis. Absolutely. Oh, Paw Patrol. Paw Patrol. Paw Patrol. 
My kids love that show. Can't leave Paw Patrol out of this. <laughs> you know, I could watch Paw Patrol with my nephews. I'm I'm actually okay with it. It's a decent show. Yeah. Uh, it's I, I, I it's not bad. I mean, it's pretty bad. I got my daughter into uh Dr. I mean, for God's sakes, there. you're talking about a town that gives tax money to dogs to fight crime and put out fires. What kind of insane <laughs> shit is that? Don't you know discount what? the dog's ability to they put out fires. Have thumbs. <laughs> they clearly you know do a good job. Otherwise they wouldn't do it again each week. It's more reasonable than the universe of cars. If you go into the universe of cars, it makes no fucking sense. Yeah, how many cars put out fires, Alex? There's no people. It's just cars. How are they made? <laughs> All do they get, Yeah, is, do they fucking make a baby car and it grows up? Or what the... I don't... Cars, cars really pisses me off. Because well, every time I watch it, I'm like... I start thinking about, like, why? 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 You know that, like, it all started because someone just loved their car way too much. Uh, Tell Pipe was looking very tantalizing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, there's an SNL sketch just like that where a guy is able to fuck his car. <laughs> <laughs> Look that one up. It's good. Okay, so Earl Birdie, Beardy. Sorry, Night Rider has a sexy voice. I'm just saying. Uh, absolutely. But, see, Night Rider was built by humans and cars... There's no fucking humans. That's where right, I started. Okay. Yeah. Let, the legend of Earl Birdie, the fifth Birdie in the 15th century. Several versions exist, but they all revolve around Earl Beardie playing cards. That's actually close to a lot of other stories. The story goes that he was visiting the castle one dark Sabbath night, and upon returning to his room, he started drunkenly shouting for someone to come and play cards with him. I'm Being tired a... of playing solitaire. <laughs> I want to play Uno. <laughs> He's like, I'm playing Texas Hold'em by myself. What the fuck, guys? Get in here. So he shouted, I'll play with the devil himself. Don't do that. Shortly after this, a knock was heard on the door, and upon answering, Beardy found a tall gentleman in a long black coat. He politely asked if the Earl still needed someone to play cards. The Earl, of course, agreed, and they retired to the to a room in the castle, slammed the door, and started playing cards. Lots of swearing and shouting would be a, <laughs> would emanate from the room and throughout the castle into the night. Dag nabbit, yeah. son bitch! <laughs> You're taking all my money, tall man! <laughs> what tarnation is this? I don't know why Earl, Earl Birdie has a Texas accent, but I just assume that's what happened. I assume the same thing. Uh, Curiosity drew a servant to the room. He peered through the keyhole, only to be blinded by a white flash of light. Ooh. Yeah, karma. Yeah, seriously. The Earl heard Earl heard to commotion out heard the commotion outside his door and rushed to it to reprimand the servant. However, when he turned his back around, and the gentle the gentleman was gone, along with the Earl's soul. <laughs> Alex, for everybody that's listening, Alex is now hiding underneath the covers. Yes. So, the, uh, how he knew that his soul was taken, I just assume that that tall man had a uh, silver suitcase, like from Pulp Fiction, and put his soul in it. You know, that's what was going to Maurice. It was Maurice, right? Yeah, it was Maurice, yeah. It was his soul, and you open it, it's glowing. Yep. That's how the devil does it. Um, Earl Beardy has been identified as either Alexander Lyon II, Lord of Glamis, died in 1486, or Alexander Lindsay IV, Earl of Crawford, died in 1453. So he could be two people, but his soul belongs to Satan. Uh, apparently, he was a brutish, cruel, and twisted man who drank heav heavily. This That's, guy just sounds like me in a previous life. Yeah. I isn't that just like every sort of Scottish Earl? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> That's every Scotsman. That's like fucking 75% of the country. Yeah. Uh, I think we're going to... So if, if if my girlfriend is watching, she did her master's degree in Glasgow. Uh, she might be taking offense to this, but that's okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. His presence is heard, seen, or felt throughout the castle now. Children have... 
uh, awaken in the night to a dark shadow standing over them in beds. That is a very, very sinister haunting. Dark shadows are not a good sign. I mean, um, it's kind of fucking terrifying. Can you yeah. imagine the psychological trauma of that? Like, 30 years down the line, yeah, I saw a giant, brutish, drunken, asshole Scottish man standing at the foot of my bed when I was three years old. Yeah, I just don't understand how we go from playing cards with the devil, though, to, like, essentially wanting to molest children. I mean, where does, where does that leap come from, Birdie? It Beardy. could have been their fucking uncle, to be honest. Oh, Beardy, please tell me. Come on, man. Yeah, maybe it wasn't even a ghost. It was just, like... It was their dirty uncle. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> All right. So swear words and shouting is heard throughout the castle. It is believed that this is the uh, this emanates from the Earl who has been forced to play cards till doomsday in a secret chamber in the castle. How oh, shitty. I gotta say, is I'm just pic- yeah, I'm just picturing this dude. Just eternity playing solitaire. A game of solitaire <laughs> that he can't win, but the cards never run out. Right, it's just like just enough, just one at a time, just like oh yeah. man, dude. And then honestly, he gets to the point where he can't go anymore, and he just throws the cards away, and then they come back. Yeah. Honestly, this is this is the best devil's trick because it the really devil is. was essentially like you could play cards for eternity, and Earl Birdie was like sweet, and then like come fucking nineteen nineties, and Earl Birdie's like, um, can I get a PlayStation? And the yeah. devil's like, no, nah, man, you're playing solitaire. <laughs> this, is, this is what we agreed on. No Tomb Raider for you. <laughs> or he gives him the PlayStation, but the only game on the PlayStation is solitaire. <laughs> the devil's I was, solitaire. I was going to say Parappa the Rapper, but, you know. <laughs> Superman 64. This guy just a <laughs> dick for all eternity. Unreleased cyberpunk without the patches. <laughs> oh my god, that's hell. <laughs> that's a, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring a preacher again. It's a little like the Saint of Death. Go watch it. Um <laughs> This Earl man, I I I kinda like him and I kinda hate him. Which is I mean, like I don't he molests children apparently. He's just chilling at the fucking foot of their bed. Yeah. This Earl yeah. sounds like a dick. Yeah. I think he deserves the the hell the hell worm. Do we know what the hell worm is? Is it has it been like sort of identified or? If I had to guess, it's probably fucking solitary for eternity. No, I mean like which room in the castle? Do we know? Oh no, oh, no okay. no no. In fact, it's pro- probably a secret room. I've come to find that there are many secret rooms in that castle. Yes, I I I don't know if we're gonna get to this. But one of the punishments back then was to just wall people into a room for the rest of their lives. Yeah, and I'm assuming this castle cool. has one of those. Oh, we'll get to it. Yeah. I see. So unwanted construction. Originally, it was planned to be to build the castle on a nearby hill, which that's where you build a castle. So you get high ground. Uh, each morning, though, when the workers returned to the site, their tools were scattered and broken and their work undone. Eventually, a supernatural voice rang out to them, build this not enchanted spot. Build this, I'm sorry. Build, build not, not on this enchanted spot where man hath neither part nor lot. Build down in yonder blog where it shall neither shake nor shog. Now, real quick, before we go any further, isn't there like an Arthur myth about Merlin cursing a castle. There is, right? So so do you think this is connected in any way? It could be. So the Arthur stuff, it's either traced back to Wales or Scotland, right? And um, he may have been a person, but yeah, Merlin uh, cursed. Oh God, what was the cat? He did curse a castle in Scotland. So this could be it. Yeah, that would keep falling down when they built it, right? Yeah. And I thought I was making that up, and I could not find it anywhere in the no, I think it's... two seconds that I tried to Google it and then gave up. I, Arthurian, <laughs> legend, Arthurian legend is very interesting. Uh, it's hard to find hard facts. You're just like, well, castle yeah. cursed? Well, nothing showed up. Yeah, basically, that's exactly what I did. I was like, this sounds familiar. Nope, can't find it. All right. Kind of like you were like Queen, Queen Elizabeth. You were dictating it to someone, and they couldn't bring it back to you. Keyword there, <laughs> dick. 
dictate. <laughs> the instruction was followed. I mean, I guess, okay, so the tools and stuff being moved, like, at night, that's very uh, uh, Skinwalker Canyon. Just, hey, I mean, kind of, yeah. I, I think... I think like I don't know. It's 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 that prevailing theory that all this shit falls under the same umbrella, right? So the fairy folk of Scotland and fucking Ireland could be what we would be what we would consider skinwalkers over here. Or aliens or whatever. But there's a story from Skinwalker Ranch where the some of the boys, like the sons of the guy who bought the ranch, were like building a, a fence, right? Which is a fucking hassle. So they built the fence and then went to sleep and the next night the wood the fence was gone and the wood was piled like it was but it was in a different place than they had originally piled it and the dad thought it was a prank and made them rebuild it but like as a prank that's a pretty stupid prank because then you got to do more work i mean it could have just as easily been like fucking 16th century larpers <laughs> going up to a dude and being like hey man don't build it here because uh, this is our fucking playground. And the Scottish guy goes down to the local pub and gets hammered and comes up with that whole fucking saying. Yeah. He's you like, know, you won't yeah. believe what these goddamn fairy folk told me to do. And boom, now we have a legend. You know, I think a lot of this could be chalked up to just getting drunk. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's, it's not an uncommon occurrence in Scotland. <laughs> getting drunk. <laughs> you know, uh, I believe... Edinburgh or Glasgow is the stabbing capital of the world. <laughs> that's, that's not giving them guns anytime soon. Well, no, they, yeah, because they don't have guns. They got they got shivs. <laughs> if I could put up gifts on the live stream, it would just be what is it, Fernando or whatever from <laughs> from Futurama. Yeah. I'm gonna stab you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. All I can do is stab. <laughs> So the inhabitants of the hill were believed to be fairy folk who wanted no human interference on the site. So they they uh, they were going to build it on this great you know hill. So again, there's a strategic idea for castles to be on a hill, so you have higher ground to defend your castle because you know you want people to if you have you know serfs or whatever working your land, you you want to protect at least some of them during an attack. So as a, so you have them in the castle. I learned that from The Last Kingdom, but, you know. <laughs> um, the hill is also called uh, Fairy, Fairy Pans. Fairy Fairy Pans. Pans. Fairy <laughs> Pans, so, sorry. Fairy Pans, which originates from the time when the ritualistic blaze of the... Su- the, the ritualistic fires blazed on the stomach. Oh, so this goes back to, like, paganism and shit. Yeah, so once yeah. again, it was probably just a couple druids approached, like, a Scottish dude and was like, hey, don't build here. And this yeah. dude went and got hammered and blamed it on <laughs> supernatural it occurrences. Very folk. Um, the hill is the Republicans okay, and the hippies in the sixties. <laughs> this, this is very much the Republicans. The some t- two, two dudes roll up with like dreadlocks, and the Republicans are like, "My God, look at this!" Just, you know, speaking of Scots getting drunk, I am wearing a shirt that says, "I've got my forty ounce and a system to overthrow." So. Oh yeah. Um, I think I'd fit right in. They don't have forties there, they got tall boys. Uh, oh, I definitely fit right in with Scotland. Like that's of course. I love the Scottish people. I really do. Yeah. I'm half no, English, great. half Irish, so Scottish is like perfect for me. Yeah, absolutely. And you have a kilt. And I have a kilt. I have an Irish kilt. Yeah, yeah. It's uh I would it's pretty cool. I love your kilt. I wear it to rock shows, everybody. It's, it's and it's not a utility kill. It's a real kill. No, it really is. Yeah. Like it takes. It's a pain in the ass to put on. Yeah. But I was, I wear, I was there when you bought it. I wear nothing underneath it because if I'm wearing something underneath it, I'm just wearing a dress at that point. That's that's a really good point. Uh, I was really disappointed to find out that the 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 kill only dates back to like the 1500s. That's it's awesome. actually really. I know, it's disappointing. So, like, William Wallace probably never wore a kilt. Um, all right, so let's get into a curse. Ooh, I love curses. Family curses, too. All right. Supposedly, the castle is haunted due to an incident involving a chalice and sire John Lyon. 
The story goes that John brought a curse down upon the family when he was removed from the chalice heirloom from, or when the, he removed the chalice heirloom from its seat at uh, Fort Ev. Pronounce that for me. Fort Fortavoy. 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 Okay. Apparently, the chalice brings bad luck to the family and the castle's inhabitants. The chalice is in the shape of a lion and can hold an entire bottle of wine. Visitors to the castle were reportedly forced to down a cup before heading out. Some would be lost and confused after leaving the castle. Yeah, this... I don't think this is so much a curse as drinking no. an entire fucking bottle of wine before you have to leave the castle. Like, I don't know about you guys, but I've had shit like walking wine night, which is where I would like just drink an entire bottle of red wine. And I can tell you by the end of the goddamn episode, I was very lost and confused. See, I'm just thinking of like... This is the first shotgun ever in existence. <laughs> just like the chalice. The chalice had like a little like like opening in the bottom and he would just pour the wine in top and <laughs> it's, it's the first beer bong ever made. Beer bong, yeah. <laughs> Man, it, you know, this is what bothers me a little bit. I used to drink a lot of wine. And a bottle of wine, in my opinion, is three to four glasses. Um <laughs> But I think if you down a bottle of wine like that from a chalice or shotgun a bottle of wine like that from a chalice, you're going to get pretty fucked up pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. you're going to curse yourself. Of course you fucking are. Yeah. Because you're going to walk out and get trampled by horses and shit yeah. because you can't see straight. And it's dark. There's no street lights. All right. So there's also a deadly river. I love this. The river uh, Dean that runs through the property is said to clip claim uh, a life once a year so running water in paranormal sort of research is very important because it kind of can carry energy or amplify energy and especially when rivers cross where there's a river like a river crossing it, it, there's supposed to be like a very like intense uh paranormal activity there so that's pretty cool another fable says it spares a life once a year and claims a life the next that's nice. Another one says that the deadly river claims uh, once every seven years. So, so I, I kind of just want to point this out real quick. Like, I'm going to actually disagree with you, Max. And here's the thing, right? It's A, inconsistent about when the deaths are, because it's three it different is. fucking levels. So what that tells me yeah. is people are going in and drinking this cursed yeah. chalice, uh, a fucking shotgunning wine inside the castle, and then they walk outside and drown in a goddamn stream. That's pretty common, I bet. It's not that hard to put two and two together. It really isn't. All right, so we're getting some ghosts here. So the ghost of a young servant boy. An, you wrote African American, but he's not African American. No, no! He's just like an African because he's not American. Oh my god, did I put that here? <laughs> Look, maybe they took him from America, all right? <laughs> they, they got this guy to Africa, or from Africa to America, and then England went over and took him to Glamis Castle. I mean, England was was instrumental in the slave trade, as we learned from Libertar, Libertalia, right? Yeah. Uh, so let's just say a young black servant was mistreated years ago, which, duh, they were horrible. Um Seen sitting on a stone seat by the door of the queen's room. He's a full-bodied, wow, a full-bodied apparition, but never wanders from that spot. Said to uh, said to trip passersby. Yeah, which is hilarious. <laughs> he will just fuck with you. <laughs> like, I mean, he's, I like he's this probably angry. Yeah, I like him too. I mean, he's probably mistreated horribly. He's just like, you fucking assholes. I'm going to trip you every chance I get because I can't get up. Like people. Yeah, yeah, it's like, people. well, now I got fucking ghost powers. I'm going to fucking trip everybody. Exactly. I did the same shit. Oh, this is my favorite. We're getting to the woman without a tongue. All right. Most reported and most chilling ghost of the, is the woman without a tongue. Which ugh. Witnesses say she is seen roaming around the castle, pointing at her wounded face. She has also been observed looking, looking out from a barred window in the castle. Sir David Bow's lion, while taking a late night stroll through the grounds after dinner, reportedly saw a girl gripping the bars of the of a castle window and staring dis, uh, distractedly into the night. Just as he was about to call out to her, she abruptly disappeared 
as if ripped from the window. There's no record of whom this ghost may be or what happened to her. Dude, this so, is actually... No, go on, if I I have a theory, and I don't know how cold it gets in Scotland, it gets but my, my theory is <laughs> that she put her tongue on the window, the bar of the windows, and <laughs> when she was ripped away... Her tongue got ripped out, and that's why she's tongueless. I'm going that, with the story the as the basis of that. It's, it's yeah. Ralphie, right? It's Ralphie yeah, from it's, a Christmas, Christmas story, story, man. It's just gonna say. The dumb bitch put her tongue on that cold thing. It froze, and it got ripped off. Oh, my God. Oh, God. I think, I think you're it's right. cold in Scotland. You are 100% right. Yeah. <laughs> this happened. So, this happened. This is exactly what happened. Who, who knows who she was? She's just some chick. Maybe she was visiting or something, and she's like, man, those fucking bars look tasty. Hey, guys, guys, I would say that this is the most chilling ghost story in here. Yes, okay, so Ooh, this is the great lady. This one's pretty, this one is pretty chilling, and, and we have hard facts on this one. Okay, so to believe to be Janet Douglas burned at the stake as a witch in Edinburgh in 1537 for being a witch. They didn't burn a lot of witches. They hanged them mostly. It was the bad ones they burned. So she must have been a really witchy, awesome lady. Janet Douglas tended to piss off everybody she came in contact with. She did. She was a strong, independent woman (laughs) in the 16th century. Someone's got to stand up for poor Janet in this podcast. You know what? I'm with you, man. I think that she... She made people just called her a bitch, but I think she was just kind of, you know, she asserted herself. She asserted herself by trying to kill motherfuckers. <laughs> and strong, yep. independent lady. So on December uh, 1528, Janet was accused of treason for bringing supporters of the Earl to Angus, uh, Earl of Angus to Edinburgh. She was then uh, charged with poisoning her husband who died on September 17th, 1528, thought uh, she cleared, although she was cleared of that crime for some reason. Um, I assume she blew someone. Uh, (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) Well, there goes the strong, independent woman theory right out the window. So I I guess guess she was a a black widow, I guess. Ouch. (laughs) All right, keep in mind that at the time, James V, King of Scotland, was feuding with the Douglases. In between 1528 and 1537, she gets a new bow, Archibald Chambell of Skipness. Dude, I, like, she's got to be hot, okay? I mean, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. this dude had to hear that she had poisoned her husband, and he saw her and was like, I tap that. <laughs> He's like, you know what? She poisoned me all she wants. I just want to tap that. <laughs> Arnold get... Johansson? Yeah, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you get cleared of the crime? I'll be her husband. <laughs> exactly. Let's see. Um, in, in July of 1537, she was accused of cons- conspiring to poison James V and communicating with her brothers who were, heavily cons- who were heavy, cons- heavy conspirators against the crown. Although the allegations were untrue, she was sent to Edinburgh and Castle Dungeon with her new husband, who ran off and died. I know. He was like, I didn't sign up for this shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you were just a hot chick. What the fuck happened? <laughs> hot chicks are she- the bane of guys' existence. Oh, they just <laughs> fall right into the trap. Yeah. Um, what's happened to a couple of people? I know. Um, James could find no evidence to support his claims, so he tortured her family and servants to find it. <laughs> Running out of options, James declared her a witch, and she was burned at the stake in Edinburgh in 1537. Yeah, because, okay, so... She was just tortured into it. We're, we're, we're talking a lot of shit here, but honestly, James hated her family. And he was literally looking for every reason to put her down. And so, yeah. in the end, you know, the brothers kind of hated them back. So they were actually conspiring to... Uh, to like fucking uh, go against the crown, yeah. but what happened, as typically happens during that time, is that um you know the woman just happened to be around, so they assumed yeah. she was involved. Well, and James, so James V uh, was actually like a big 
he had around this time he had been because he had become a big proponent of the Malleus Maleficorum, the the Hammer of Witches, which is the book of law that sort of dictates how witches are found and then prosecuted, and then killed. And he was a, basically he from this story he he was reading from the script of the Malleus Maleficorum. So like he he basically tortured her into admit it you, you either admit that you're a witch or you're not but either way you're gonna die yeah so, <laughs> well, were interesting brutal. fact i don't know if you guys knew this but witches once a month during the full moon and for about four to five days afterwards <laughs> start <laughs> acting really strangely like doing some weird shit so i mean is it really that far-fetched i don't are you blaming I mean, this on the menage I'll, period I'll, I'll leave it up to the audience oh to my decide. God. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay, I love this. Janet didn't have her fucking period for like 10 goddamn years in a row. <laughs> what? <laughs> fucking hell. All right. Running out of... Okay, so at the chapel on the castle grounds that houses 46 people, one seat is always reserved for the white lady, Janet Douglas. So they still sort of revere her. They, they leave a seat for her. That's kind of like uh, on Passover, you leave a seat for your um, Ezekiel. Yeah, because uh, they felt bad. They like yeah. fucked her over hardcore. Because first they accused her of killing her husband, who probably died in natural causes. And then her other husband uh, got jailed alongside her and her brothers. And they were like, she's a witch. Because they couldn't yeah. find any fucking, like, uh, um, evidence against her. So what ended yeah. up happening was, you know, a good two, three hundred years later, they went, oh, we fucked up. Yep. The, the Malice Valley for Karim, the, the that book, The Hammer Witches, is, is, was the cause of probably, like, tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of deaths. Because it, it just, like, like, it, like, just like this story... Whether she's a witch or not, or participated in any sort of like witchiness, once you get sort of into the interrogation phase, you're the the subject is done for. They're they're they use terrible like the the pair of anguish like. Ugh. Yeah, you know the guy who wrote that book is down in hell, being like, "All I was trying to do was explain the menstrual cycle. <laughs> People would understand it better. And look where it led. Look where it led." Well, the, we should we should do an episode on that book because it's actually really interesting. So the guys who wrote it had claimed that they had a a papal sort of like writ to write it, and that it was like approved by the Catholic Church, but they lied. They forged the the papal writ. So the the Pope actually had like a ori originally said like like they were in a, he was in a tough spot. He was like, well, fuck. Now everyone's reading this thing. And they're using it. I guess we got to say it's okay. And then a couple years later, they're like, the writ was never had. Like this thing is dangerous. Stop doing this. Like even the Catholic Church was like, don't do this. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. So visitors yeah, to the Catholic Church was like, women have menstrual cycles. <laughs> All right, I'm done. I'm sorry, I'm done. But yeah, the bastards that wrote that book, they were two Dutch guys. Horrible people. Um, actually, there was a Dutch king. Um, visitors to the Edinburgh Castle are said to have witnessed her ghost as she apparently visits the site of her death. Man, I, so oh, there's a lot of full apparitions here, which I, I love. Oh, I've been muted this entire time. I, oh. look, shit, I had something right there. The, uh, fuck, I forgot it. Go on. Malleus Malfagorum or? Hammer witches. Uh, first of all, yeah, we are gonna do a uh, a a podcast and probably a series on the witch trials of Europe because the witch trials of Europe were far more fucking metal than the ones of Salem. Yeah. Uh, okay. Salem managed to kill like a hundred some people. Uh, Europe killed thousands. Yeah, and Germany was really bad for that. Dude, of course the fucking Germans were real exactly. bad. At hey. what point in history are the Germans not known for just killing large groups of motherfuckers? <laughs> right? Once the, once they get organized and they have a cause, they just fucking go for it. Jesus, goddamn Germans, man! Mm -hmm. They're logical, they're reasonable, and they're fucking efficient. Always then, have been, always will be, and, and deadly in the end. Deadly, man. Okay, so this. <laughs> 
I don't think we can go. We we can't go through an episode without mentioning the Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck the Nazis is all I gotta say. I gotta say that too. Do all right. So the, this is good. This is one of this is this is a good part too. So the secret chambers of of Glamis. So the most famous legends, the chamber of chamber of secrets. Uh, uh, the le- <laughs> woo. I wish I had this, my wand. I have a wand. This is what the well, castle, I have a wand too. Nice. This is what the castle is known for. Not only is there just like one crazy ass chamber, but apparently there's multiples. And like each one of these stories, uh, at least one of them is verified. Absolutely. So the legend has it that if you count the windows on the outside of the castle and compare them with the windows inside, they don't match up. So there's a there's like a a missing like a missing window that you cannot account for from the inside, but from the outside you can see it. Um, supposedly contains multiple secret rooms with Earl Beardy taking one where he's playing cards. Apparently, an old story talks about a group of guests staying at the castle in an attempt to find the hidden chamber. Towels were hung from every window. However, when the guests went outside, many of the towel, many of the windows were towelless. So they hung the towels on the windows to see if they could figure it out. And they go outside, and the towels are gone. That's All the towels time. were like, "Hey guys, want to go enjoy?" Is that is, is that no? Is that I towel? still I, I, think the, I think the towels were there, but like a lot of the windows that were missed. Oh, okay. You know, because so, they yeah, couldn't so they, access them. They put every they put a towel on everyone that they could access, and they went out. and They're like, exactly. what the fuck? So the secret of the chambers is supposedly passed down to the Earl Strathmore uh, from his uh, his father. Uh, whether their heir comes of age, legend states that one of the heirs flatly resu- refused the secret, and it was lost in time somewhere in the late Victorian area. What a dumbass! But oh, hey, it looks like we may have cracked this case. You know, yeah. When I first started researching it, I was like, I wonder what the secret is. I wonder what the secret is. Yep. Turns out the entire fucking internet knows what the secret is. This dude, <laughs> <laughs> this dude did not fucking hide it that well. Um, there's at least one uh, guaranteed secret chamber, and we're gonna discuss it. There's a potentially two that's very likely. And then there's one that's really fucking dumb. So we'll we'll jump into it. Okay, let's crack this thing wide open. Secrets of the family. The uh, Olglive clan, verify, this is verified. During a clan conflict, conflict in 1486, the Olglive clan found themselves at Glamis Castle. Seeking refuge from the Lindsay clan's aggression, Lord Glamis graciously welcomed them in and stowed them in a hidden chamber to hide. However, Lord Ga- Gl- Glamis was a friend of the Lindsay clan and promptly sealed the door behind them along, <laughs> alongside their fate. Many years later, the door was unsealed after complaints of noises coming from the room. Inside, they found the skeletal remains of the Olgiv clan. Visitors to the room often feel extremely uneasy. So, basically, this is a guaranteed dark part of their history. And if this is a secret that they're passing down, of course they're fucking ashamed. Because oh, yeah. over in the That's European a... states, being Double a host cross. is considered far more important than being a host in America. And Absolutely. if you're hosting somebody, you're very unlikely to wall them up in your castle and kill them. You know, that's, yeah, absolutely. So, like, even, like, if we go to modern days, I just watched a documentary on Joe Strummer from The Clash, and everyone said, like, he was a super gracious host. Whenever they sat down in the squat or wherever they're living, he'd pass out drinks and treated everyone really well, which is, like, it's a British thing to do. It's the English, this like, the European, the Scottish, they all do that. They're very gracious to their guests. So this guy, this asshole just double-crossed him like a dick. Yeah, he double-crossed him and probably went, hey, let's pass this down through the ages. Oh, let's not tell anybody about this. Yeah. <laughs> until, like, the sounds are heard because, uh, you know, they're tormented fucking ghosts because you're stuck in a goddamn castle room with your family for centuries. Are you sure you don't want me to build that Scottish castle for you? So, I, I, I definitely want you to do it. Secret rooms, too, so I can wall up some of my wedding guests. What? I was going to wall you up. Oh, well, yeah, that works, too. <laughs> I was actually going to wall both of you up with podcasting equipment. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see how long we last? Yeah. Yeah, I love it. All right. Oh, this is a good one. Deformed child. 
There's a rumor that the Strathmore's firstborn was Thomas Bow Lion and was named the Monster of Glamis. Wow. That's you know, you know, sad. Yeah, why would you name your kid that? <laughs> this one's actually kind of yeah, really sad and very possible. Yeah. Very so, possible, yeah. Absolutely. He was born badly deformed on October the 21st, 1821, and pronounced dead at the same day, according to, to records. Many so, believe he's uh, uh, up to facts. This is where it stops. Um, okay. And they, they have records of this baby being born and pronounced dead on the same day. What follows is speculation, but it's very seeable in a royal family. Absolutely. This is just like, you know, you got, you got, you know, your, your family tree is just a straight line. So you're going to have a deformed baby somewhere. Yeah. And you're um, going to try to hide it because you want to appear perfect in the fucking world. Absolutely. So many believe he survived, though, lived out through his, lived his days in isolation, kind of like maybe the elephant man. The family removed him as their heir and kept him out of sight due to his, his appearance. He was allowed to go out at night to wander the uh, carpets, roof, and grounds. Furthermore, according to accounts by singer and composer Virginia Gabriel, who stayed at the castle in 1870, a hideously deformed child was born of the family, and his howls kept the singer up at night. Damn. Yeah, so he's, he's a, a hunchback in Notre Dame. Yeah. So, wow, he lived kind of a long time. He supposedly died in the 1920s, and his room was walled off, still uncovered to this day. So this is not facts, this is speculation. His this ghost is... is... Oh, no, go on. All right. His ghost is said uh, to haunt the section of the uh, parpets known as the Mad Earl's Walk. I think I made it very clear, but I believe this actually happened. Yeah. I agree. I can definitely see something like this happening. And see, I, I know I make a lot of jokes, and I'm a wise guy, but this made me real sad to think of an English Quasimodo just out yeah. there somewhere. <laughs> just like, you know, I, you can only, go, like, just going out at night. I, yeah. just, oh, it made me so sad. It's just so like sad. late at night you hear, Sanctuary! <laughs> Sanctuary! <laughs> His mom's like, I mean, you already have it. Now shut up. We feed you, and you let you. We let you out at night. So shut the fuck up. All right. What man. if he's the one that was like standing over the children, man? Yeah, because he's like, he's like, you got. I want to play. Like, yeah. I didn't have any children. I got a ball. I got yeah. some string. <laughs> I got a yo-yo. I got a, I got a yo-yo. You want to go walk the mad? Or Earl's walk with me? Absolutely. <laughs> all right. So this is this is this is our uh, we're gonna end on this, and I think we always end on vampires. An alternative version of the myth states that with every generation of the family, a vampire is born and bricked up in that room. I love how somebody was just very clearly at the bar one time, heard <laughs> all of these facts, and went, "What if it's vampires?" I know. <laughs> it's like. It's like you got all this other shit that makes sense. Oh no, but let's go with the Twilight version because apparently <laughs> that's where this ends. Uh, it's very similar to an episode of Doctor Who that took place in Edinburgh, but it was werewolves and not vampires. So who knows? Secret of Edinburgh coming up next. Yeah, well, that was uh, an episode of Doctor Who that was the establishment of the Torchwood Foundation. So. But like every generation, that a boy is born who is a werewolf, and uh, he ends up scratching the queen. So that there's a there's a theory in, in the in the show that that the queen was part werewolf. <laughs> you know, like just, the Corgi's queen. Well, yeah. Just, it was Q Q E one actually. Uh, just just to end it, I kind of want to think like, what is each one of our favorite ghosts from here? Um, personally, I think the Christmas story ghost is still my favorite. The licking the window that? and getting her ripped yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like her, the, the tongueless lady. Um, I kind of oh. like this Quasimodo guy, honestly. Yeah, mine, I think I'd probably go with the Quasimodo guy or, yeah. or Janet Douglas. Cause I, I Ooh, just like actually. to think of her as like. You know, 
like a badass woman in like the 16th century that was yeah. taking no shit from no man. I mean, ultimately she did because she was yeah. burned at the stake, but. Yeah. But I mean, the fact that they got to that point means she was taking no shit from no one. Yeah, that's she true. Was like, she yeah. was like the Joan of Arc of Scotland. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking more of uh, who's who's that famous like chef lady that was a spy. Oh, um, Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> Not Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> um, uh, God, it's on the tip of my tongue. Um, what is her name? Ma- Matahari? Is that her uh, name? No, oh, she. Okay. Uh, let's see what pops up on Google here yeah. for Chef Spy. Chef Spy. Julia Child. Oh right, yes, she did. She was spying for the for the Allies. Yeah, uh, yeah. She, yeah. I like. I. It's just the first person that comes to mind because it sounded like she really was trying to help her brothers, most likely. Uh, you absolutely, know, take yeah. down the king. So that's. I mean, that that whole story is is bonkers on itself because I, like, I've I've even heard that like this whole conspiracy. There's like they they James the Fifth made up this idea that like she put a curse on him and shit. And whispered her in his ear. And she did admit to it, but only after torture, which, you know, like the kind of torture back then was pretty terrible. So I, I'm sure she admit to anything at that point. And the torturing her brothers, the torturing her family. Fuck. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm assuming the torture today is still pretty bad. And I'm assuming it today probably <laughs> gets yeah. the same result. Right, I, mean, yeah, I don't think it's gotten any better. Kind of Bay being like, "I did yeah, it, I did it," and be like, yeah. "Did you really No? <laughs> like, yeah, so. I mean, breaking fingers and waterboarding's pretty bad. So, you know, I've uh, I I read Archer's book because uh, Archer <laughs> literally wrote a book, and um, and he's got a uh, a chapter on torture, and I think I agree with it. He's just like. You're going to lose. You're gonna, yeah. They're going to get the information from you, so just immediately give it up and pop the Xanax. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I love that episode with Slater where they waterboard him. <laughs> um, man, this is a good. This was a good episode. I love Glamis Castle. I'm going to visit it. I think all of us should visit it. I think it's on my list of shit to do. Fuck um, yeah. We should ghost on it. Like, I would Absolutely. love to see the woman without a tongue, you know, get tripped by the African-American guy. Uh, yeah. I am right, sticking by that. <laughs> African-American, okay. We could do a special live episode of Glamis Castle. Absolutely. But I'm telling you right now, I will or would be wearing one of those, like, pajama onesies. As we go through, because I won't have my blankets to cover me. You wear a bunny pajama pajama onesie. Why is it gotta be bunny? I don't want a no fucking bunny. Why not? I want like I don't know because I'd rather be like I don't know. They got like weasels or some shit like that. Yes. I want to be my Patronus, man. Yeah. (laughs) So I'm looking up. I'm looking up. uh, I did a search for uh, Glamis Castle Paranormal Investigations because I was thinking about this. If if the castle was open to investigations. The Ghost Bros or someone on one of those shows would have investigated it, and I haven't seen it. So I don't know if it's open to ghost hunters. Yeah, Um, it's not open the same way Skinwalker (laughs) Ranch is not open. Open. (laughs) Okay, so we're trespassing, right? Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Um, Let's see. Glamis Castle exercised by ghost hunters. All right, so... Somebody did hunt it at some point, but I don't know if it uh, is open to ghost hunters. Cause Exercised? I don't even know. What, are it's... they trained in fucking exorcism like the Catholic priests? Like, nobody does that anymore. It, this is what pisses me off about some of those shows. They'll bring in an exorcist or a demonologist, and he's has no affiliation with the Catholic Church or anything. He's just a guy wearing, like, a maybe a, a collar and has a cross. And is just yelling at things. Yeah, he read like, a Wikipedia page on demons. Yeah. And when kind of I know how to handle it. My Scottish castle. Yeah. <laughs> my, yes. 
absolutely all right so, so we we need to end the episode on a shout out um yeah absolutely it's, it's, it's shout outs this was a good episode guys hey Pretty i want to i want to thank a all the listeners uh you guys are the reason we're here um absolutely. i want to thank murder and uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. soon to be five i want to thank murder <laughs> and special g alex um, i want to thank no one alex but myself thinks- Alex thinks nobody ever. Um, the and the, and then we got a shout out for Seebs. Uh, she yeah. subscribed to our channel. So guys, Seebs is a uh, streamer on Twitch. Go check her out. That's C E E B B Z. If you like this stream for some fucking reason, uh, hers is better. So go go follow yeah. her and watch her. Go follow her. We'll put it in the description so you, so everyone can can go follow her. Um, uh, I think I think we should. Su- I, I like the idea of supporting other streamers. I think it's it's pretty good. Well, good streamers, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, I I just want to give a shout out to my girlfriend. She's been really supportive of this, and um, I love her dearly. I hope she's watching. Oh, and shout out to Ansley for following. Thank you yeah. for, for thank you for following us. Yeah. Uh, we hope we have somewhat entertained you guys. Uh, I had a good time, and that's truly awesome. Yeah. I can guarantee you uh, next week's going to get really fucking bizarre because we're going to be talking about ley lines, and you're probably asking yourself, what the fuck are ley lines? <laughs> well, stick around next Monday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time as well as uh, I think it's like 6 p.m. Pacific Time. Uh, you'll find out. Yeah, and absolutely. then you'll be like, wow, this is fucking bizarre. Yeah. Ley lines are bizarre. They have a lot of science behind them and a lot of bullshit behind them. So it's like, what the, the you don't really know. We also uh, have discussed as a group, we're going to have our uh, podcast far more static. Uh, if you ever want to catch us, we'll be on Twitch three times a month on, uh, on the Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and... Uh, 6 p.m. Pacific time. If you have questions or potential topics uh, that you'd like us to yeah. research, reach out to us at crookirish.studios at gmail.com. You can also yeah, get, find... Go on, Max. I was just like, give us ideas. We'll do it. Like, if we get, if we get fucking fan ideas, I'm, I'm all for it. Uh, you can also visit our YouTube page where we will have all our unedited videos. Uh, that is Crook Irish Studios. And you can join our Discord where you can actually reach out to us. Uh, a lot easier if you wish. Libertalia. That's our Discord. Libertalia. Um, yeah. And uh, I am known as the Jew Bear on there. Um, and uh, I might change my name to murder, but whatever. Anyways, um, so uh, I guess we're gonna end it. I'm gonna end it, and my my I'm gonna change my my uh, my farewell. I'm just gonna say I got a 40 ounce and a system to overthrow. <laughs> Spoken like a true punk rocker. Uh, keep in mind, Maxwell Murder runs a podcast called My Brain Is Hanging Upside Down. Uh, it's a sister podcast to this one, released once a month because it is. Holy fucking research. We did um, Beastie Boys. We're going to post it soon. Oh, yeah. It's it's going to be fun. Look out for that. My name yep. is Crook Irish. Uh, keep it weird. I'm special guest Alex. Wasn't invited. Didn't ask to be here. But yet, here I am. You just show up. I don't even know. It's the weirdest thing. It's just every, you know. Yeah. It's almost like you photobomb our fucking uh, uh, group chats. Yeah. And I'm not helpful in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> I give no good information except for just, you know, stupid remarks once in a while. Hey, I, I do want to say you guys are awesome, and I thought that was a pretty good show. Agreed. All right, so we don't in the stream? Yep. Okay. I mean, technically I'm gonna go- they can still hear us, but yeah, go ahead. Okay, well, I'm going to go to bed soon. Um, I got to talk to my lady friend. <laughs> <laughs>